providing information covering events, activities, and news from Columbus Consolidated Government. You're watching CCG TV News Watch. On behalf of Mayor Skip Henderson, City Council, and the entire staff, welcome to the Columbus Eternal Flame Monument Plaza. We would like to take a moment to recognize our distinguished guests with us this afternoon. Please hold your applause until the end. U.S. Representative, 2nd District, Congressman Sanford Bishop, Jr. Mayor Skip Henderson, Mayor of Columbus. The Maneuver Center of Excellence Commanding General, Major General Patrick Donahoe and his spouse, Teresa. The Maneuver Center of Excellence Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Derek Garner and his spouse, Sherry. Medal of Honor recipient, Colonel Retired Ralph Puckett and his spouse, Janie. Ms. Tamara Cash and Alexis Cash, widow and daughter of the Medal of Honor recipient, Alwyn Cash. Our pastor for today's ceremony is Reverend Andrea Franklin, a veteran and pastor of True Vine Deliverance and Worship Center here in Columbus. Also attending today's ceremony is Mr. Paul Voorhees. And of course, all of you who have traveled from near and far to be in attendance as we celebrate and honor two of our local heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the colors and the playing of the national anthem performed by the Maneuver Center of Excellence Band and remain standing for the invocation given by Reverend Andrew Franklin. Military members are reminded to stand at attention and civilians should place their hand over their heart during the playing of the national anthem. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal Father, we come reverencing you as King of Kings, your Lord of Lords, you're the creator of all things, and you are the giver of life. We thank you for this gathering as we honor those that have sacrificed so much. We say thank you. We ask that you continue to bless our every endeavor. We thank you, now God, that we can 
dwell in a land that we call the home of the free. It is in Christ's name we pray. Thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Reverend Franklin, for those powerful and moving words, which serves as a direct reflection to your faith. Thank you. The City of Columbus Eternal Flame Plaza was established in May 23rd, 1991, and dedicated by the citizens of Columbus to all veterans. The inscription on the dedication plaque reads as follows. May this eternal flame burn forever in the memory of those brave and patriotic members of the armed forces who have sacrificed so much to ensure freedom of our great nation. Today, March 25th, serves as a significant day as we, on this Medal of Honor Day, are afforded an opportunity to add two of our local heroes to this monument. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you could join me in a warm welcome for the Maneuver Center of Excellence Commanding General, Major General, Matt McDonald. First off, it is, uh, it's, it's always at ceremonies like this where you feel inadequate to the moment. So, here I stand, inadequate to the moment. Colonel Puckett, Cash family, thank you for allowing us uh, this moment to celebrate not only the accomplishments on the field of battle, but the lives that were led. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming out today. Congressman Bishop, uh, thank you for your support for soldiers and veterans. Mayor Henderson, thank you as well uh, for your support for Fort Benning and all of our families, soldiers and veterans here in the Chattahoochee Valley. John Hargrove, sir, our civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army. Again, thank you for all you do uh, for, for Fort Benning and for our soldiers. The, uh, the Medal of Honor is our highest award for gallantry in battle. It was in the depths of the Civil War when the Medal of Honor was first brought into being. And it was in an Iowa Senator, James W. Grimes, who proposed a bill that would authorize the awardings of Medals of Honor for Marines and sailors. And it wasn't until later uh, that a follow-on law established one for soldiers in the Army. It was signed into law by Abraham Lincoln in the midst of the Civil War. And there'd be over 1,500 medals of honor awarded by the war's end. Over time, as more levels of awards for gallantry were brought in, it was preserved that only the most deserving service members who would distinguish themselves with conspicuous gallantry in the face of grave danger that would earn this award. World War II saw more than 16 million Americans in the service of their nation. Only 473 medals of honor would be awarded. In Korea, only 147, one of which is with us today. In the wars of the past two decades in Iraq and Afghanistan, only 28. It is often said that the Medal of Honor is awarded when everything else goes wrong and a soldier of uncommon character rises to bring order to the situation. It is that soldier, that soldier's courage that is often the difference between success and failure on the battlefield, between life and death of his or her comrades. It is that that we mark today. It is that service and that sacrifice that we honor today. It is those names 
that are on this plaque. So for forevermore will be memorialized their service, their character, and their accomplishments. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak today. Thank you, more importantly, for your service to our nation, our service to our people. Thank you. Sir, uh, thank you for not only the commitment to our soldiers, but your enduring commitment to this great nation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the mayor of Columbus, may escape Henderson. Good afternoon to um, to all of those that are gathered here today. I, I need to start by saying thank you to a few people who have made this day possible. Uh, I certainly want to thank, of course, the uh, Maneuver Center of Excellence uh, uh, Color Guard and the music that was performed by the amazing MCOE band. Uh, also, want to thank the um, uh, National Infantry Association's Rob Chapa. For, uh, for coordinating things with Colonel Puckett. And of course, uh, we want to also thank uh, Command Sergeant Major Retired Celestine, who is, in addition to being Master of Ceremonies, has helped to uh, coordinate, uh, coordinate with uh, the, the Cash family. Uh, we also want to thank um, uh, Mr. Paul Voorhees. His name is often mentioned anytime there's any event that is celebrating uh, soldiers and or police. Of any of our any of our public servants, uh, he always stands ready to provide assistance, and in this case, uh, he provided uh, the funding for the plaques that we're going to be unveiling here today. And of course, I want to thank uh, Colonel Retired John House. John is sitting out in the audience with his wife Marilyn, but he is the straw that stirred this drink. Uh, he did most of the legwork in trying to make this come to fruition, and we really need to acknowledge his efforts in that vein. And then lastly, and maybe most importantly, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank Becca from my office, who's been running around here making sure the tent doesn't blow away. Um, I also want to acknowledge Councillor Thomas, uh, Judy Thomas, who is here. Uh, and um, most importantly, we want to acknowledge and thank our veterans that are here and brought and, and are present with us today. Uh, this uh, this event today, we want to thank uh, Colonel Puckett and uh, and thank the Cash family for allowing us a few brief moments to to express our everlasting admiration and gratitude for your actions performed in the service of our country. You know, Columbus, Georgia, and Fort Benning have always been inextricably entwined. Uh, Without Fort Benning, I think it's safe to say that the Columbus as we know it would not exist. And out of that relationship, the people of this community have grown to love the soldiers. And we feel a certain ownership of the men and women that come through Fort Benning. And so to the Cash family, uh, to the Puckett family, we hope you will allow us and forgive us just a little for having our buttons stretch a little bit because of our pride uh, in our uh, local uh, officers that have served so gallantly. Um, we want to say to all of our military veterans how much we appreciate this service. But on this day, to the Cash family and to Colonel Puckett and his family, uh, we celebrate you, we thank you, and, and we are so proud that you are members of the Columbus community. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Henderson. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is my distinct honor to introduce our keynote speaker today. So please join me in a warm welcome for U.S. Representative, 2nd District, Congressman Sanford Bishop. Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
We come to honor two great American patriots. I am so honored to be here today to recognize the service of Colonel Retired Ralph Puckett and Sergeant First Class Alvin Cash, both remarkable leaders and distinguished service members. I'd first like to thank Council Member and Colonel Retired John House and Mayor Henderson for organizing this event and bringing us all together to celebrate our local Medal of Honor recipients. I too would like to thank Mr. Paul Voorhees, Ranger Joe, for funding these commemorative plaques and to give tribute to Columbus Monument Company for making them. Additionally, I would like to recognize the Maneuver Center of Excellence, the National Infantry Association, the National Infantry Museum Foundation, who all contributed to making today such a moving occasion. The Columbus community, as you know, has a rich history of coming together to honor our service members and our veterans. And today's ceremony exemplifies that spirit. As we gather to honor Colonel Retired Ralph Puckett and Sergeant First Class Alwyn Cash, I'd like to draw your attention to the phrase that is found in both of their citations. Quote, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty, end of quote. When I read the citations of service members who have earned the Medal of Honor, I am struck by this phrase. It says everything you need to know about the love these service members demonstrated for their fellow soldiers, sailors, airmen, and it says everything you need to know about their love for this country. The Bible tells us in John 15, 13, greater love hath no man than this, but that he lay down his life for his friends. Such is the case for both of these recipients. Sergeant Cash succumbed to his injuries, and Colonel Puckett, thank God, survived. Sergeant Cash demonstrated true heroism on that fateful day in Iraq in October of 2005. His Bradley fighting vehicle was targeted by an improvised explosive device, an IED, as well as gunfire. As the platoon sergeant and commander of the vehicle, he recognized his duty to ensure the safety of his soldiers, and he went above and beyond that duty. He moved quickly to exit the burning vehicle, help extract the driver who was engulfed in flames, extinguishing them and moving him to safety. Sergeant Cash disregarded his own health and safety and was badly injured from making repeated trips to the burning vehicle to help rescue the rest of his unit to safety. Sergeant Cash continued to display his exemplary character when he refused to board the medevac, the medevac flight until all his men had been evacuated. When he finally arrived at the medical facility at Ballard Air Base, he expressed no concern for himself, but only that for the others, despite his own injuries. According to a member of his treatment team, Sergeant Cash kept saying, I'm good, I'm good, just take care of my guys. Regrettably, he eventually succumbed 
to his injuries, and he gave the ultimate sacrifice. But his memory lives on through commemorations like the one today, and through his wife, Tamara, and daughter, Alexis, who are both here with us today. He's also survived by his daughter, LaJada, and son, Andrew. Andrew recently graduated from basic training here at Fort Benning, and Tamara calls Columbus home. And of course, we're here and gladly recognize the actions of another extraordinary leader, Colonel Retired Ralph Puckett, Jr., a native of Tifton, Georgia, then Lieutenant Ralph Puckett, volunteered to join the fight at the beginning of the Korean War. In November of 1950, Puckett began a multi-day operation with the 8th Army Ranger Company, a company of 51 U.S. and nine South Korean soldiers against a large force of enemy troops. Under intense enemy fire, Colonel Puckett rallied his troops to advance on a heavily defended hill. Over the course of six brutal enemy attacks, Colonel Puckett suffered severe wounds across his body. Although severely injured, he deftly commanded his company and directed artillery to avert enemy, enemy attacks before being extracted to safety. During his 22-year career, Colonel Puckett received several illustrious awards and commendations for his outstanding leadership and heroic actions in the line of duty and in behalf of his fellow servicemen. To date, he's received the Distinguished Service Cross, along with two silver stars, two bronze star medals, five purple hearts. In 1992, he earned the well-deserved honor of being one of the first people inducted into the U.S. Army Ranger Hall of Fame. As a retiree, Colonel Puckett has remained actively involved with military affairs. This includes volunteering with the Ranger Brigade, as well as serving as an executive with the educational nonprofit organization, Outward Board Bound. Colonel Puckett has accomplished many things in his life, but none of these would have been possible without the grace of God and the enduring love and support of his wife, Jean, and their children, Martha and Thomas. Former Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm once said that service is the rent we pay for the space we occupy on this earth. Today, we honor these brave soldiers for their service and their sacrifice. So on behalf of a grateful nation, we say thank you to Sergeant First Class Alwyn Cash and his family, and to Colonel Retired Ralph Puckett Jr., Mrs. Puckett, and the Puckett family. To God be the glory for the service and the sacrifice that you have given and rendered to our great nation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congressman Bishop, uh, thank you for those inspirational and heartfelt words and for reacquainting myself and the entire audience with the acts of gallantry and bravery performed by two of our very own. So for that, I commend you and I thank you.
this time, you may unveil the plan. Ladies and gentlemen, I would ask that you please stand for the plane of God bless America. Thank you.